Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Akil and welcome to the start of this catch up series of reviews. Today's Scoob, tomorrow's Onward, Wednesday's Greyhound, and Thursday's Tesla. And then Friday, Trial of Chicago 7 comes out on Netflix. So, without any more time, guys, I'm just going to jump right into this. We are talking about Scoob, the CGI animated Scooby Doo movie that came out a couple months ago that I missed. And. Yeah, guys, this was definitely an interesting movie. This is apparently the supposed start of the Hanna-Barbera Cinematic Universe. And boy, oh boy, do I have some things to say about this. So to start off with, for my pre-rating score, I'm going to say that Scoob was an okay movie, guys. It wasn't the greatest. It wasn't the best. It wasn't terrible like what most people are probably saying it is. But it certainly wasn't like something that we all wanted it to be. I mean, that's kind of sad because this was my third most anticipated film of the year. And was my most anticipated animated film the year that is. So, it's just kind of sad that this movie just, hmm, was just okay at best. So now I'm just going to talk about the story without really spoiling anything. Basically, it's part origin story. You know, sh they in the trailer, they do show this Shaggy and Scooby meeting. Um, We also have the origin of how they meet Daphne, Velma, and Fred. And we also see them when they're older and all type of stuff. How I've swiped for the mystery gang and all that type of stuff. It's also a Hanna-Barbera cinematic, cinematic Universe film. So you're going to get a bunch of Hanna-Barbera Cinematic Universe moments and references and all that. So basically, it's a Shaggy and Scooby movie that takes place in a Hanna-Barbera Cinematic Universe movie. And the reason why I say Shaggy and Scooby is because this movie did not feel like a Scooby-Doo movie. And I'll talk about that in the negatives. But that's all I can really say without spoiling much. I know, very, very brief. But hey, it is what it is. So... Now, let's talk about the positive. So, the first major positive that I noticed instantly right off the bat was the voice acting. Frank Walker's great, Gina Rodriguez, Zach Efron, Amanda Seyfried, Jason Isaacs, Mark Wahlberg, Kelsey Clemens, Kang Jeon, Tracy Morgan. Will Forte was fine, but everyone else was great. Except Will Forte, I don't know why. But, I loved everyone else. They did a great job for what they were going for. Yeah, I just name dropped a bunch of people in those for like few seconds. But anyway... The voice acting was great, really, really, really enjoyed it. And of course, Frank Walker is a genius as, as Scoob, as Scooby-Doo, I should say. He's amazing. It's weird that the movie's called Scoob when they call him, when he's known as Scooby-Doo, but I get it. It's to differentiate between live action animations, yeah. But I don't mind the title too. Shorter, better, whatever. But anyway, voice acting was great. Another positive, that, another positive I should say, that I noticed was that I did like some of the characters. Yes, some of the characters were great. Scooby and Shaggy still the show in this movie. The other three characters, Fred, Daphne, Velma, they're fine. They're okay, I should say, but they're not, like, great or anything, if you know what I mean. Captain Falcon, or Blue Falcon, I should say, was great. Dynamut was great. Um, Their friend, uh, voiced by Kirsty Clemens, her character was okay. But Dick Darcy, funny enough, I cared about him more than some of the other characters. Like, they gave... A good enough backstory for me to actually care about him, which was great. And I thought Jason Isaac killed it as that character. Um, there's some other characters, but I won't spoil. But they're kind of unnecessary, if you know what I mean. They're just dropping a bunch of Easter eggs and references here and there. But anyway, some of the characters I did like in this film. And finally, for positives, yeah, I know I'm flying, guys. I'm sorry, but you know, sometimes these reviews, they do take up time, but... I'm trying to go as quick as I can. I'm not going to be like Jeremy Jones to go like rapid fire. But anyway, back to this review. So I've talked about two positives. The final major positives for me is that I didn't mind the modern feel. Yes, I did quite like the modern feel of it. At first I was like, mm, I'm not feeling it. But then yes, the modern feel definitely did work for this movie. So yeah, now let's talk about negatives because wow. This movie, yes, guys, got a bad rap. A very, very, very big bad rap. So, the first major, major negative is that it did feel rushed. It never stops, it just keeps going. It's like, what is this, a roller coaster ride film? I get what they're going for, but this film is supposed to be the start of a cinematic universe. Look at what I Man did, look at what Man of Steel did. Okay, I get it. Superhero films, live action, blah, 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 all that type of stuff. It has a limited runtime because it's animation. But, hey, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse could be almost two hours. Why can't you make this movie? Like, 90 minutes at least long. This movie was just ever so slightly under that 90 minute mark. But still, 
I wish this movie was longer because they would have done so much better with some of the characters. This movie felt rushed. I'm sorry guys. I'm really scared for Greyhound and Tesla because those movies have very short runtime. So fingers crossed that those movies don't feel rushed and actually feel well paced. This movie, was, the pacing was just out. It was just bad. I'm sorry. It felt rushed. The second thing I want to talk about when it comes to negatives is that this movie has tons and I mean tons of unnecessary storylines guys yes there's a storyline about you know uh Tracy Morgan playing a character there's a story about Captain Falcon I mean Blue Falcon there's a story about Dick Darcy and then there's this mystery that goes on at the start of the film and then this and then that and then why unnecessary storylines I should have said unnecessary moments but really there are a bunch of unnecessary storylines in this movie this movie just had to be a Scooby-Doo movie and that brings me to my final negative that really pissed me off with this movie. And it's that this movie did not feel like a Scooby-Doo movie. I'm sorry. It felt more like a shaggy Scooby movie, a Scooby-Doo movie in a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe film. Or let me rephrase that. It felt like shaggy and Scooby in a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe film. Yeah. With obviously Fred, Daphne, Velma and all that. But really guys, did it, this did not feel like a Scooby-Doo movie. It felt rushed. Didn't know what it was at times. It did feel messy. But I'm not going to bash the film so hard. Because there is some enjoyment out of it. And that's all I'll say. So overall guys. As a final score. I'm going to give Scoob a 6 out of 10. It's okay at best. I mean comparing it to other films. In the same grade like. Venom. Well Venom I didn't give it 6. But I gave it 5. This film is not like Venom. I feel like just like last year's Captain Marvel. They tried everything they had. But I wouldn't say it failed, but it's fun at best. You will get some enjoyment out of this movie. So overall, guys, do I recommend you see this movie? I know I haven't really like said that like about movies that I watch. Like, sh should you recommend? Should I recommend you watch this or that? But for school, I would say, just for this one time, a recommendation that you should only watch this if you're a Hanna Barbera fan, and that's all I say. I know I kind of do recommendation for like Wrinkle in Time and all that. And I know I'm like like just mumbling at this point and saying random stuff. But anyway, point is, if you're a Hannibal Bear fan, I mean Hannibal Bear fan, and you are dying to see Hannibal Bear characters on a big screen together in one movie, you're going to love this movie. Apparently there's tons of Easter eggs in the, uh, uh, in the end credit scene, I should say. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm like butchering. But anyway... This movie is for the Hanna-Barbera fans. Not for the Scooby-Doo fans, but for the Hanna-Barbera fans. And I feel like they tried. But we'll see how it goes. I really do want to see Jetsons and Flintstones. Those are the two I like. really want to see how they handle. Considering that it's probably going to be the same animation style. I'm very curious to know when exactly this movie is actually coming out. Because they set up tons of like films. So yeah, 6 out of 10 for school guys. There you have it. Tomorrow, the catch-up reviews are back and continuing with Onward. And like I said, one is a Greyhound, the Tom Hanks war drama and submarine film, I should say, that came on Apple TV Plus a couple of months ago on Thursday, Tesla, which stars Ethan Hawke. I know I've mentioned these movies a couple of times already, but I never told you what they are. Onward, you guys probably know, right? The Disney Pixar film, Tom Holland, Chris Pratt. They're the leading voice roles of these elf brothers, yeah. And Friday, Trial of Chicago 7. That film looks incredible and I've heard nothing but great things. So I'm excited to see that film. But until then, leave your comments down below. Is this your favorite Scooby-Doo movie? I don't know if it's my favorite. I still have a soft spot for those other live action Scooby-Doo films. But anyway, it was okay this movie. This movie was okay, which is kind of sad. But anyway, it is what it is. 6 out of 10 for Scoob. Don't forget to like this video. Comment down below. Tell me what your thoughts are about this movie. Again, don't forget to like this video. Comment. Subscribe to my channel. My name's Akil, otherwise known as the comic director, and I'm signing out.